Why do we love Saturn so much? Right, because we love its amazing rings. The planet stands out in the solar system because of them. The major rings have a diameter of 170,000 miles, yet their thickness does not exceed 330 feet. Saturn's slowest outermost ring spins at about 37,000 miles per hour. It's slower than the rotation of Saturn itself. But did you know that Saturn was ringless for most of its history? Let's find out how they were formed. Using Cassini's final plunge into the planet, researchers could estimate the ring's mass, 33 billion billion pounds. Further, they have determined that the rings were between 10 to 100 million years old, much younger than the planet itself. The thing is that the rings only look solid. They are made of billions of rock and ice chunks. They are primarily tiny ones, looking like grains of sugar to those as large as a house or even as mountains. The innermost chunks of ice and rock shoot through space at about 52,000 miles per hour. There are mysterious spokes in its rings. It seems they form and disperse within a couple of hours. And these spokes might consist of electrically charged sheets of tiny particles formed when small meteors hit the rings, or maybe electron beams from Saturn's lightning. One theory says Saturn's rings have formed all that extra material that remained after Saturn began, which is a material that couldn't create a moon. There's also a theory that says there was Theia, a Mars-sized planet that collided with Earth about 4.5 billion years ago. Lighter crust parts ended up in space during the impact, whereas its denser core stayed behind. But in the case of Saturn, all that debris perhaps didn't put a new moon together, but it formed rings many people today recognize this planet for. Another theory is that rings formed from dust and debris of a moon that ended up destroyed by this big impact, maybe by an asteroid or comet. Or perhaps the rings are there because once a moon fell apart because of the tidal forces coming from its parent planet itself. If these rings formed at the same period as Saturn did, they would have had more than 4 billion years to collect a bit of debris and dirt coming from micrometeorite collisions. But these rings mainly consist of water ice, no dirt at all, which means they're younger than expected. And the nature of this ring system tells us a thing or two about Saturn's fuzzy inside. Fuzzy means its core is like sludge. The helium and hydrogen in Saturn mix with more and more rock and ice over time, the closer you go to the planet's core. It's similar to what you see in our oceans. The deeper you go, the level of saltiness increases. But the rings may disappear in the far future. Rings are generally more common than we think. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have their own ring system. But not every planet has the same ones. Saturn has a fascinating halo, and definitely the most spectacular rings, true. Others mostly have rings made of dust and rocky particles, and not just planets. Other space bodies can have rings, like the asteroid called Chiricla. But even though the gas giants of our solar system have rings, rocky, or so-called terrestrial ones, don't. And one theory says it might have been that way because gas planets in the outer area of the solar system protected those rocky ones that formed in the inner solar system from all those collisions that possibly could have formed rings around them. Or it could be because gas giants are way bigger and their enormous volume allows them to have a ring system that can remain stable. And what if Earth had rings in the past too? Maybe in the time of the big collision when our moon could have been formed. Now to some more cool things happening in our solar system. Pluto, a tiny dwarf planet at the edge of our solar system. Also the one we used to call a planet has a pretty bizarre atmosphere. No one expected to see a haze there go as high as 1,000 miles. That means it rises higher above the surface of the atmosphere of our home planet. And the atmosphere on Pluto has around 20 layers. They're more compact and way cooler than scientists expected. And tons of nitrogen gas escape Pluto by the hour. But the dwarf planet still finds a way to constantly create new supplies of all the nitrogen it had lost. One theory says it probably produces these supplies through geological activity. Our moon is pretty peaceful, but that's not something we can say for Io, one of Jupiter's moons. 
This one has hundreds of volcanoes. It's the moon with the most volcanic activity in our solar system. EO sends plumes of sulfur up to an incredible 190 miles into its atmosphere. Its volcanoes emit many particles and gases into the space right next to Jupiter every single second. Its eruptive activities happen because of Jupiter's mighty gravitational forces and magnetic field. The insides of EO tense up and relax all the time, depending on how close or far away it is from Jupiter. And that's why it generates enough energy to have such an eruptive nature. Speaking of volcanoes, Mars has one larger than the whole state of Hawaii. At first, you'd probably say it's a quiet and peaceful planet. But once upon a time, enormous volcanoes dominated its surface. Yup, that includes a well-known Olympus Mons, the largest volcano ever found in our entire solar system, 374 miles across, comparable to the size of Arizona. Olympus Mons is 16 miles high, three times the height of our tallest mountain, Mount Everest. And by its volume, this volcano is 100 times bigger than the largest one on Earth. Mars can have such big volcanoes because its gravity is significantly weaker than the one on our home planet. Also, the crust on Earth moves all the time, unlike the Martian crust. Do you know how the Hawaiian Islands formed? A hot spot in the mantle created a chain of volcanoes in the crust floating above it. A Martian volcano may grow bigger because its surface isn't moving, so a volcano could build up for a longer time in just one spot. Miranda is one of the most bizarre moons in the outer part of our solar system. It's a shadowy moon that orbits Uranus, with many craters, sharp ridges, and similar disruptions on its surface. Usually, this type of relief tells a certain area used to have a lot of volcanic activities. But that wasn't the case with Miranda. Also, this moon is way too small to generate tectonic activities. Another element that could form this type of surface. One theory says the gravitational force from Uranus could have caused the push-pull action, something that made all these bumps on Miranda's surface. We'll have to send another spacecraft to find out what was happening there. We are all made of stardust. 97% of atoms we're made of are the same as the material our galaxy consists of. The building blocks of life is a term we use for a group of elements that are vital for life on Earth. And stars have these elements too, but in different proportions. For instance, we are 65% oxygen by our mass, whereas elements we measure in space, like the spectra of stars, have less than 1% of oxygen. So Mercury is already the smallest in our solar system in the planet category, excluding some other bodies like the dwarf planet Pluto. And now it looks like it's still shrinking. It's the second densest after our planet, but it's getting denser over time. Researchers thought the Earth was the only planet in our solar system with tectonic activities for a long time. And now we know Mercury is tectonically active too. Messenger spacecraft managed to map the whole planet. Scientists realize the planet is full of fault scarps, some cliff-like landforms. Since these are relatively small, they're probably young. And Mercury is still contracting even 4.5 billion years after our solar system was formed. The Hubble Space Telescope was put into a low Earth orbit in 1990. If you think about it, it's had over 30 years of experience looking at various space objects. It was named after astronomer Edwin Hubble and was built by NASA. It is also part of a group of devices called NASA's Great Observatories, along with the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, the Chandra X-ray Observatory, and the Spitzer Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope was built to explore the universe and answer some of its biggest questions, such as how galaxies form and evolve, and how the universe itself has changed over time. The telescope has made many important discoveries, including providing evidence of the existence of dark matter and helping to determine the rate of expansion of the universe. One of the most famous images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope is the Pillars of Creation. It's a photo of a region of the Eagle Nebula, where new stars are born. The photo, which was taken in 1995, shows massive pillars of gas and dust towering above the nebula. It has become one of the most iconic images of the universe. The Hubble Space Telescope continues to operate and make important scientific discoveries. 
despite some initial technical difficulties. In 1993, a problem with the telescope's main mirror was discovered, which affected its ability to focus light properly. A repair mission was sent to the telescope in 1994 to fix the problem. And since then, the telescope has continued to work perfectly. One of the more interesting discoveries made by this amazing telescope is actually pretty recent. A report based on the data from the Hubble Space Telescope shows that there is a faint glow in space around the solar system that cannot be explained by anything we know to exist. Because they have yet to figure out the source, astronomers call this mysterious glow ghost light. We don't know that this light is not coming from the stars or galaxies near the solar system, nor is it coming from dust on the solar system's plane. The researchers aren't sure what the source of the light is, but they think it might be tiny particles of dust and ice left by comets. But it's only a theory that has not yet been confirmed. When we study the universe, we often find bright things like planets, stars, and galaxies. But from time to time, we discover some light coming from places where we didn't expect to see it, like from between planets. This light may be coming from deep within our solar system, and it may be a new phenomenon that hasn't been studied before. In other words, there may be something at the center of our galaxy that produces a lot of light. Spacecraft Voyager 1 also captured images showing a lot of light coming from the edge of our solar system. How come we haven't noticed this until now? Well, because most of the light in pictures taken by the Hubble telescope comes from things close to Earth. But people usually ignore this light because they're interested in things like stars and galaxies that are farther away. We've never actually looked closely at the amount of light in the universe and where it comes from. Scientists have been using the Hubble to find faint galaxies that may have been missed before and which may be the source of this dim glow. They found that there are not enough such galaxies to account for extra light in the sky. It's not a lot of light, though. It's like the glow from 10 fireflies. But it doesn't make it less important. It shows that we may be missing something. Let's look at some other important discoveries we've made with the help of Hubble. Like dark matter, which we can't see but know is there because of its effect on gravity. It makes up for about 23% of the universe. By looking at how it affects light, the Hubble telescope helped make 3D maps of where dark matter is. These maps show that dark matter seems to be getting clumpier over time, which means it behaves very similarly to how gravity does. The Hubble telescope also discovered two new moons around Pluto, named Nix and Hydra, and studied the dwarf planet's changing surface. Additionally, it's found the mass of planet Eris, which is larger than Pluto. This helps scientists realize there may be similar objects in the Kuiper Belt, a region outside our solar system. This led to Pluto being reclassified as a dwarf planet. Further observations of these distant objects could help us understand the evolution of our solar system. Gamma-ray bursts are the most powerful explosions in the universe. And for a long time, no one knew where they had been coming from. Hubble helped us find out that these bursts happen in galaxies, producing a lot of stars and having few heavy elements. This suggests that gamma-ray bursts happen when big stars collapse into black holes. These galaxies have lots of big stars that fall apart quickly, and the stars there don't have much heavy stuff, so they can turn into black holes. In 1994, the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet collided with Jupiter. Hubble captured the whole event in detail, like a resourceful journalist. The impact broke the comet into a lot of small pieces, which resulted in 21 other visible collisions. The largest impact created a fireball and a dark spot on Jupiter's surface. Hubble's observations not only sparked public interest in cosmic impacts, but also provided new insights into Jupiter's atmosphere. To move forward with our list of discoveries made by the Hubble telescope, we also need to talk about black holes. There are points in space where gravity has so much force that even light cannot escape it. The gravity becomes so strong that matter gets squeezed into a very small space. We know that this can happen when a star, like the Sun, nears the end of its life. At the beginning of its life, a star's hydrogen ignites in its dense hot core. 
Because of gravity, it tries to draw its own mass into a tiny point. As long as it has the energy generated by the hydrogen fusion, it also pushes outward. If we look at it this way, the life of a star depends on a delicate balance between these forces, and it can last millions or even billions of years. Once that energy is exhausted, the only force remaining is that of gravity. So, some stars become black holes. Since light itself cannot escape its pull, we can't visualize black holes. For the human eye, they are invisible. We need special tools and unique telescopes to help us point them out in the universe. Hubble found that most galaxies with a central bulge of stars likely have supermassive black holes. It also noticed a strong connection between the size of these black holes and their host galaxies, which might help us understand how the universe has changed over time. Then, what is a supermassive black hole, you might ask? Go ahead, ask it. It is a very large black hole that is typically found at the center of a galaxy. It is millions or even billions of times more massive than our Sun. These black holes are so powerful that they can swallow stars and even entire galaxies. Scientists are still exploring these mysterious objects, but they believe that they play a crucial role in the formation and evolution of galaxies. Now, before Hubble, we really didn't know how old the universe was. It often led to weird paradoxes, like the one where stars discovered by astronomers were older than the universe itself. But by figuring out the approximate rate at which the universe is expanding, Hubble helped us narrow down its age, which is about 13.75 billion years. Trying to figure out the exact age of the universe is an important question. That's because most astronomers think that the universe has not existed forever, but appeared in one really hot and dense fireball called the Big Bang. I wasn't around then. The sun's heat is beneath our feet. Scientists have figured out that Earth's core is actually as hot as the surface of the sun, around 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the reasons it's so incredibly hot down there is because Earth is still shedding heat from when it was created billions of years ago. Also, when an object as big as Mars slammed into the young Earth, it not only created the moon, according to one theory, but melted the surface of the planet. A lot of that extra heat is probably still stored inside the core. But there's no need to worry. The planet's core is harder for us to access than it is to probe the surface of Pluto. In fact, chances are we may never develop technology that could physically reach the core. There's no air on the moon. But then, how can it be rusting? Scientists have discovered the presence of hermatite on the moon, and it's a kind of rust. A special NASA research instrument examined the light reflected off the moon's surface. It turned out that the composition of the satellite's poles was very different from the rest of it. The moon's surface is dotted with iron-rich rocks. But without oxygen and liquid water, rust can't appear. Solar winds add to the mystery. They bombard the moon with hydrogen. And hydrogen makes it much more difficult for hematite to form. Even though the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, it still has some trace amounts of oxygen. Its source is our planet's upper atmosphere. Earth also protects the moon from almost 100% of solar winds, although not all the time. And even though our natural satellite is bone dry, there might be water ice in the shadowed craters on its far side. A day on Uranus lasts 17 hours, 14 minutes, and 24 seconds. But get this, the planet has a tilt of around 98 degrees, and that makes a season on the gas giant last 21 Earth years. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. In the next 30 to 50 million years, Mars's gravitational forces will tear Phobos apart, and it will likely result in the formation of a ring around the planet. The Earth is the densest in the solar system. At the Earth's center, there's a core that takes up 15% of the planet's volume. It consists of two parts, the outer and the inner core. 
The inner core is a solid ball made of iron and nickel. Its radius is 760 miles, which makes 20% of the entire Earth's radius and 80% of the Moon's radius. The 1,500-mile-thick outer core is liquid. It also consists of iron and nickel, but it's not under enough pressure to be solid. Mars houses the biggest volcano in the solar system. While everything seems to be calm on Mars nowadays, in the past, some sort of force caused enormous volcanoes to form and erupt. One of these volcanoes is Olympus Mons. It's 16 miles tall, which is the height of three Mount Everests and 374 miles across, making it about the size of Arizona. The volcano grew to such a gargantuan size because of the weak gravity on Mars and the lack of tectonic plate movement. Gravity is not the same everywhere. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and substances that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. You weigh 0.5% less standing at the equator than you do at the poles. In most cases, that's a difference of less than one pound. How high up you are also has an effect. So if you were at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Just don't look down. Earth's toughest living thing is so small you can't see it. Water bears, also known as moss piglets, are cute little creatures with eight legs and squashed up heads that are less than a hundredth of an inch in length. Despite their microscopic stature, they can basically survive anywhere. They prefer bits of wet moss or the bottom of a lake, but they won't complain if you put them somewhere really uncomfortable. They can endure extreme cold and incredible heat and survive both huge pressure and high radiation. Some of the little bears once even managed to survive unprotected in outer space for 10 days without a problem. <laughs> that is tough. They handle all these things by rolling up into a ball and hibernating, which reduces their need for oxygen and food. The moon's gravity is about 17% of that on Earth. If you weighed 200 pounds on our home planet, on the moon, your weight would decrease to a mere 34 pounds. You would also be able to carry stuff six times heavier than what you can carry on Earth. It would also be easier to walk on the moon's surface, but it would be more dangerous too. Your feet, inside a heavy spacesuit, would sink into the lunar soil up to six inches deep. But let's imagine you decided to skip the tedious process of walking by leaping through the air. Then you'd likely lose control of your jumps in no time. Plus, the moon's surface is littered with deep craters. It would be a tough feat to avoid all of them. You can see solar eclipses because even though the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, it's also 400 times closer to Earth. So it's perfectly capable of obscuring the star. But in 50 million years, I won't be around then. The moon won't be able to block the sun completely because of the satellite's changing orbit. A full NASA spacesuit costs an unbelievable $12 million. Yeah, I can believe that. 70% of this hefty sum is for the control module and backpack. At the very center of Uranus, there's a rocky core. Small, just half the Earth's mass. Compared to other planets, Uranus's core is rather cool, 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. An ice mantle surrounds the solid core, and that's the largest portion of the planet, about 80%. It's also not the ice you might be thinking about. It's a hot, dense fluid made up of water, ammonia, ice, and methane, sometimes referred to as a water ammonia ocean. Uranus's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, but it has its blue-green color because of methane gas that absorbs the red light. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other in the solar system. But unlike Earth's oceans, it's made not of water, but of metallic hydrogen. The ocean's depth is a mind-blowing 25,000 miles. That's almost the same as the distance around Earth. Venus is a champ when it comes to volcanoes. The planet has about 1,600 major ones but none of them is known to erupt. There's a supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from us. 
It hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's 57 octaves lower than the middle C on your piano. That's one quadrillion times deeper than what we can hear. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discovered some abnormalities on the planet's surface, showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hadn't finished cooling down yet. There are planets that aren't bound to any star orbit and aimlessly wander through outer space. Among the most spectacular looking space objects are pulsars. Pulsars are a type of neutron star. They shoot out some of their material almost at the speed of light. Regular pulsars spin at a reasonable speed, between one-tenth to sixty times per second. But millisecond pulsars can spin at an impressive 700 times a second, which is way too fast for the human eye to even process. As they spin, they emit a beam of radiation from their axis that looks like the light from a lighthouse. Astronomers can notice pulsars when they face Earth, since it looks like a light being shined on our planet. When the light shines elsewhere, the pulsar can't be seen. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Saturn's rings are very thin compared to its size. If you had a scale model of the planet that was three feet wide, the rings would be 10,000 times thinner than a razor blade. Even though Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, it still has snow, but not what you'd expect. It snows metals and rains acid. Not a great vacation spot. <laughs>